Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to another double take. Today the two films I'm going to discuss is two Sonny Chiba Executioner films. This is the Arrow Executioner collection that recently came out. Um, this contains the 1974 Executioner and its sequel Executioner 2 Karate Inferno. Um, also, Sonny Chiba was one of the the many um, the next Bruce Lee. He specialised in karate. Never really wanted to get into acting, um, but he made quite a name for himself and had quite a good career. Now, obviously, I'm not an expert on practically anything, um, but I'm certainly not an expert on the career of Sonny Chiba. I'm sure if you go over to a Touch of Film or Fanatical Dragon they'll probably be able to tell you more about Sonny Chiba than I will. Um, these two films are tremendous fun. Um, there is no real discourse on the meaning of life in them. Um, and I'm not going to spend this very short video talking about, you know, all the motifs um, and all the deep meaning of these films. Because these are visceral films that should be enjoyed in a visceral manner, not necessarily an intellectual manner. Um, so the basic synopsis, and sometimes the plots do get a little bit um, incoherent at times. There's a group, a team put together of renegades. So kind of the opposite of the Bruce Lee clean cut image. Um, Sonny Chiba plays a guy who's a bit rough around the edges. The team consists of an underworld assassin who is basically a bit like Lee Van Cleef in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. If he gets paid he always sees the job through. You have a fairly um, scumbag of a criminal who's been in prison for rape and robbery and various other things um, and this kind of crew is headed by the commissioner of the police and his daughter is in charge of kind of keeping them pointed in one direction or other while they bicker between each other um, and get into all manner of scrapes. The first film is about trying to stop drugs coming into Japan, the second film is about a jewellery heist and a kidnapping of a little girl. Um, there's cameos in the films from certain other characters. Obviously Chiba played the Street Fighter. Um, but if I'm wrong, I think there is a cameo by Sister Street Fighter in the second film. But again, these films are not about being too cerebral. These are about enjoying them. Both made by Terio Ishii, who, while I was watching it, did kind of strike me that Terio Ishii is, or Takashi Miki is Terio Ishii, um, or the descendant of Terio Ishii. Now, Ishii didn't want to make this film, um, he had no interest in that genre of film, a bit like Mike Hodges in Flash Gordon, he had no interest in fantasy or science fiction. Um, but he made an absolute masterpiece, in my opinion. My opinion is not fact. So Ishii didn't really want to do The Executioner, so he just made it as outlandish and ridiculous as possible. You know, there's just goofy comedy. There's also comedy that does actually work very well and makes you laugh. There's Ishii's obsession with, like, torture and gore. Um, there's nudity... There's just a, a bunch of stuff, especially in the first film, um, because Ishii really didn't want to make the film, so he just went, 
I'm going to make this as silly as possible, I'm going to make this as extreme as possible. And of course the film was really successful. So he ended up having to do the sequel. Um, which, as with sequels, isn't quite as good as the first film. But it's still so much fun and well worth checking out, even though it is called Karate Inferno. And there's not actually that much karate until the end of the film. Because as I say, it kind of... It's not quite an Ocean's Eleven film, but it's more about the heist. The humour is just really quite fantastic. Um, but very silly. You know, at one point, Sonny Chiba does urinate on one of his um, partners who's on fire. Um, there's just lots of stuff. It is Ishe, so we do have eyeballs popping when people are hit. Again, this is not... Um, these are not two Bergman films. The actual set is quite wonderful, as you'd expect. Uh, it's a new commentary by Chris Pogali and Mark Calco. There's a 30 minute retrospective on Sonny Chiba, which is quite fantastic. Sonny Chiba Karate King, um, which features Grady Hendrix and um, Tom Mess. We actually get to see what Tom Mess looks like after all those commentaries on Third Window releases and other um, Japanese cinema releases. Chris Bogiali, Marco Ryokjum and Seiji Anno from the band Guitar Wolf in Japan, who's a big fan. Um, there's image galleries and reverse artwork. So again, this is not a cerebral review of these films. This is more a visceral reaction to them because they are visceral films and they're just so much fun. They're both round about the 87, 85 minute mark. They don't need to be any longer. They don't slow down for character development or romantic interludes. It's pretty much just full bore for not quite an hour and a half and they're both wonderful. Um, if you're that way inclined I would highly recommend picking them up. Um, again you're getting two films for pretty much the regular price of an Arrow release. Um, but obviously you could wait for an Arrow sale. You probably won't get the slip cover though. Um, but two just wonderful films. Two fun films. Again, you don't have to watch films about the meaning of life all the time. Um, and these two certainly aren't about the meaning of life. They're just about um, punching people in the head until their eyeballs pop out their sockets. Um, tremendous, tremendous fun. So thanks very much for watching this completely um, non-intellectual review of these films. Um, just go pick them up and have a lot of fun. This has led me to probably picking up the Shout Factory or Shout Select box set on Chiba at some point, um, which has seven of these films, because the two Executioner films are absolutely wonderful. Um, or complete nonsense, depending on your viewpoint. So please let me know if you've seen The Executioner and The Executioner 2, what you think of them. And hopefully join me again for more random reviews. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films, saying farewell.